Welcome to this battle map presentation on the Battle of Stamford Bridge, the 25th of September 1066. The aim is to know the events and consequences of the Battle of Stamford Bridge. This was the second crucial battle of 1066, in which the Vikings faced down the English. In this battle, Harold Godwinson apparently secured his position on the English throne against the Viking King Hardrada, but as most of you will already know, his success was not to last. Nevertheless, this is an important battle with some pretty epic moments, one of them shown in this painting. However, despite the epic nature of the battle, there's nothing epic about the Microsoft Paint background, nor the very crudely animated soldier diagrams that I've included. But it should be a clear summary of how the battle went, and I hope that you'll enjoy my narration. So without further ado, let's have a look at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. So let's consider the battlefield at Stamford Bridge. As you can see that Hang on, that's the wrong Stamford Bridge. Okay, the Battle of Stamford Bridge has literally nothing to do with Chelsea Football Club. It's not that sort of contest, okay? So instead, we're going to have a look at the real battlefield. The Battle of Stamford Bridge, 25th of September, 1066. Vikings versus Saxons. That's better. Not a football field, but the actual battlefield. Okay, the map isn't brilliantly drawn, but it gives you the main features. The battlefield at Stamford Bridge had the river Derwent running through the middle of it. This map is not actually aligned east-west or north-south, it's just aligned in such a way that it's really clear who's on which side. But roughly speaking, the left-hand side would be the west bank, and the right-hand side would be the east. Let's consider the Saxon deployment. Harold had force-marched his army north after the defeat of the Saxons at Gate Fulford. They had been gathering their strength along the way until his army numbered over 10,000 men. He achieved this 180 mile journey in only four days. That means that some of the soldiers in this had uh, achieved about two marathons a day across four days. Okay, most of the men who did this would have been on horseback, but they didn't fight on horseback, and others who had gathered along the way would have marched many miles. But it was worth it for Harold. His 10,000 men had achieved complete surprise when they reached Hardrada's position on Stamford Bridge. Indeed, they even managed to catch some of the Vikings on the west bank of the uh, River Derwent, while the rest fled across Stamford uh, Bridge as quickly as possible. It's worth bearing in mind the size of Stamford Bridge at this point. This is little more than a wooden footbridge. Only a couple of men could cross it at any one time. So if you're imagining a large stone structure that an entire army could smartly march across, think again, and that will become important. What about the Vikings? Hardrada's force was completely surprised, and many were without their armour. Those on the west side of the river fled across and formed a defensive position. There were around 6,000 Viking warriors present, and Hardrada immediately sent for his 3,000 reinforcements, guarding the boats about 10 miles away at Rickall. Doubtless at this point, Hardrada very much regretted splitting his force. The first event was a lone horseman trotted across Stamford Bridge and confronted Hardrada and Tostig. It was not unusual at this time for a messenger to come and confront the enemy uh, uh, commander to see if terms could be met without any bloodshed. Tostig stepped forward as interpreter. The Saxon man said, Submit, and you can take back your title and earldom. Tostig replied, What would you offer my lord Hardrada for his trouble? At which point the Saxon replied, Seven feet of English land, for he is taller than most men. Referring to the size of grave that Hardrada, a famously tall king, would need. And on that the conversation ended. Hardrada was most impressed with the boldness of this Saxon rider, and asked Tostig who he was, at which point, according to the sagas and the chronicles, Tostig revealed that it was Harold himself. So, at this point, battle could be joined. But the English army had to get across that tiny bridge, and this was going to be more difficult than you'd expect. At this point, the English were delayed by a Viking axeman who was able to hold the narrow footbridge single-handedly. He was apparently a very large, very skilled warrior who was able to go berserk with his famous Dane axe on the bridge. And as the English tried to cross, never more than about three at a time, he was able to very easily deal with them. The English lost about 40 warriors until eventually a sneaky Saxon floated under the bridge in a half barrel and stabbed the berserker from below. We can see an uh, artist's impression of that event in the picture. So, using this sneaky tactic, the Saxons had cleared the bridge. 
they were now ready to advance across it. The Axeman killed, the English advanced across the river. The Vikings formed a shield wall and fought savagely. Many English thanes and housecarls fell. After a while, the Viking lack of armour and English superiority in numbers began to tell. Tostig had been killed, supposedly by Harold himself. Also, Hardrada had been struck in the neck by an arrow and also killed. At this point, it appeared that the English were on the verge of victory and the remaining Viking resistance was beginning to crumble. But the Vikings then made a counterattack. They truly were the most ferocious warriors in Europe. Just as the exhausted English tasted victory, Viking reinforcements under Einstein Ori arrived having run 10 miles from the boats of Rickall. They killed yet more English warriors before the tired Vikings succumbed to the inevitable. Harold had won a crushing but costly victory. So what are the outcomes? Well, Harold Godwinson had beaten the Viking invasion. He had learned that a bold surprise attack could win against a formidable enemy. However, the English had lost 5,000 valuable trained soldiers, and these weren't typically the feared, these were the thanes of England. And these soldiers would not be there to face future threats. The Vikings were crushed. They lost around 8,000 killed and missing. Only 24 out of their 300 ships were needed to take them back to Norway though Harold showed mercy to Hardrada's son, securing a promise that the Vikings would not invade again. Surely Harold's throne was now secure. Except, of course, it wasn't. Only a few days later, as we've seen in our timelines, Harold got the desperate news that Sussex, his own county, was being attacked by uh, Norman forces under the command of William the Bastard. And so his crown was not secure. He would need to rush south, and fight the third great battle of 1066, and the battle that would seal his fate. But that's for another lesson. So why did the English win at Stamford Bridge? Firstly, the reasons for the battle. Harold Godwinson marched north to defeat the Viking invasion of Harald Hardrada, who wanted to be king. Harold achieved surprise with, uh, with the Vikings split and unprepared. Harold Hardrada rather arranged a defence while an axeman blocks the, blocked the English advance across the bridge. The Vikings lost, despite the late arrival of reinforcements. Harold Godwinson had won and defeated Hardrada's invasion, Hardrada and Tostig had been killed, and the Vikings were almost wiped out. That said, 5,000 English warriors had also died. As a consequence, Harold had temporarily secured his crown, and he had gained confidence but he became overconfident in the tactic of surprise. Harold's forces were severely depleted. He would need to rely more on the temporary soldiers of, of the feared. Harold was also in the north when William of Normandy's invasion arrived in the south. So, what have we learned about King Harold? That he was a skilled and brave commander. We've also learned that Harold's men gained confidence in him and were likely to show him even greater loyalty. But the threat from Norway? That is now gone. The Vikings were utterly crushed. Only 24 out of 300 ships were needed to return the survivors home. And most historians recognise that the Battle of Stamford Bridge was the end of the Viking era in Northern England. In summary, consider the battle. What happened? When did it happen? Where did it take place? Who was involved? Why was it important? Revise it. Read it back and try to write it out again from memory. If you're unable to do this, it's worth viewing the video again, or perhaps deepening your knowledge by considering using another source. And on that note, this battle map presentation is at an end. I'll say thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll say thank you and goodbye.